What's your rating of the Lacanus trilogy? All right. So the series as a whole. <laughs> this is your average three books average. And why are you yeah. laughing? What? What? I'm, I'm hyping it all up. What? What? No, don't you dare. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Ramble Podcast. I'm Richard. I am Austin. Today we're doing a review on the Lacanus Trilogy, a series that I think is highly underrated for mainly two specific aspects. So this is a surprise uh, pitch for me. And I love these pitch reviews because you do all the work. Yep, basically. I, I sit here and nod my head, and it's great. When you, Well, when you do research, you kind of go overboard. I've seen your notes. Like, I research, and then I kind of absorb, and I write down key elements. Yeah. Yeah, you absorb and then just write everything down possible, which leads to things taking forever. That that's why our Tolkien video was forever, forever long. It and was, we only covered a third of our notes. Not even close. Yeah, yeah. So I like these because for the audience, for me, we've done these before. You've read the series, I have not, so it's going to be completely spoiler free on the Lacanus trilogy. Yep, yeah. cool. and we'll see how good of a job I can do on pitching to you and mm-hmm. to you guys listening and watching. Um, whether you should read the book or not. Let's get into it. All right. So, um, the author, uh, James, is... Oh, God. I'm terrible with names. Islington? Is that is, it? Is, is Islington. Islington. Okay. Sorry, James. I'm, I'm bad with names. So, yeah. anyway. This is actually his first trilogy. Uh, when he re- first released the book in 2014... Let me see. Did I get that right? Yeah. 2014, it was a self-published book. And less than a year later, because it got so much buzz online, that Orbit actually picked him up. This is the one thing I knew before this started. Because mm-hmm. you're, when you were talking about these books with me, and when you read the trilogy, you're like, hey, the first one was self-published, and then Orbit picked it up. That, to me, is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Hey. Um, it happens to a couple times, but not too many that I've read. I, I, know, I know it happens, but do you know how it happens you, not often. Okay, it doesn't happen often? Because is that is that the new way that books are being published as a lot of people self-publish and then orbit or tour or somebody picks it up i imagine it must happen more often than i think but this is the one where i actually saw it it was yeah at least yeah. known it was kind of, i think it was probably written in the forward okay. that i read it first so cool, cool. but yeah so he wrote this series he wrote these three books about uh two years between each book and he's actually now working on a second uh trilogy that he's already written the first book. It's already done. He's currently working on the second already. First book hasn't even come out yet. It's still in the copy edit phase. We're talking about a different series entirely. Exactly. Okay. So just saying him as an author, he's as writing an another author, yeah. writing another series. I will definitely be checking it out uh, when it comes out because great at magic systems. Like we, I'm excited to see how this guy who started off on a good started off on the good foot. I want to see how much he's improved. Cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what what is your general review and pitch for this? What's the trilogy about? So yeah, uh, what it's about, and this is kind of my pitch on it, like I didn't pull this from the back of the book, mm-hmm. but um, basically, war has ended, um, and those that can use magic are shunned from society and magically shackled from using their powers in many different ways. Uh, Davian, one of the main characters, is a little different. His powers come from somewhere uh, deeper and darker. Uh, and he chur- he journeys to discover who he really is and how he can save his home. Uh, then the another, another main character, Caden, wakes up covered in blood with no memory of it or anything else. And the more he learns, the less he wishes to. There's other main characters, but those are the two main, main ones. Um, so... There's two magic systems in the in this series. Uh, one is called Essence, and the other is called Khan. Essence is your classic magic system. It's like basically using life force. You know, every creature has life and all this stuff, and you can use it to create fire and all these different things. Khan is the draw. The Khan is the uh, the cool magic system that uh, is the manipulation of essence. So. If essence is water, Khan is the, making the jug. Khan is oil. No. 
can you give me one analogy ever? <laughs> I just <laughs> it's the container. <laughs> I, anyway. I, I just want to throw one analogy that you like one day. It's one so of these sad. days you'll get it, but oh. you know. Anyway, so Khan, the main draw of it is it deals with the idea of fate and time, uh, time manipulation. And I, yeah, the big thing with this is the, um, it deals with the ethical and the ethical dilemma and intricacies of fate so when Khan is introduced to the world fate itself is introduced at the exact same time fate the, in, like fate as we know it fate fate so okay people can see the future I... some people can and it always comes true always hard rule never it never Ooh. is it's never uh, it's not ambiguous it's it, it's not ambiguous and it always comes true there's no loophole around it wow and it seems like time is moving on a predetermined path. So yeah. now you have, you know, the moral questions of free will. If fate exists, does free will exist? And so that oh. whole idea drives the protagonist and also the antagonists. And in a far more interesting way where the antagonists are literally fighting to end fate because they want free will. That sounds pretty cool. That yeah. that's and time travel is something I'm usually really hesitant about, but the way that you said it's a very hard line and hard rule mm -hmm. interested me. That was I like oh, yeah. that. I like that there's defined the time travel and the how fate works is very well defined. It sounds like oh yeah, nice. It, and also just the idea that the antagonists it, imagine the moral implications of you were you were on a journey to basically correct all the wrongs you did in your past and go back in time and fix everything mm. right you want to end the idea of fate and have free will that's what you're trying to do <laughs> that's your goal if everything can be rewritten and you plan on going back in time anyway to fix everything does the awful atrocities it takes to get there even matter if it's all going to be erased anyway i'm gonna ask an impossible question then mm-hmm what book is similar to this? Like, is there any other time travel <laughs> weird book out there that that explores? Oh. The, this sounds super unique, very uh, unique. The the world itself, not so much. The characters, the, wor the world isn't unique. You yeah, not terribly. Okay. Uh, the the characters, not specifically unique. Like, it is pretty generic fantasy, really. Except the magic system. Huh. Magic system is neat, and even then, parts of it are not really unique. Okay. It's specifically this stuff with. Con, fate, time travel, that is just expertly done. Then what would you say for someone who's read a similar book? Is there a similar book that you'd say, if you read that, then you should read Lacanus? Oh. Mm. And am I saying that right? It's Lacanus Trilogy? Lacanus Trilogy. Okay. I mean, it's it's up there with the... Is Wheel of Time similar at all? No? Yeah, actually. Okay. There, there's some aspects to it that... Uh, Wheel of Time is the big daddy to this one. Like, this one's trying... This is Little Bro. Little Bro. Mm -hmm. It's it's smaller in scale, smaller in history. Like, it's not as complex. But, hey, it's hard to compare to Wheel of Time. So... Got it. But it does have some similar vibes. Okay. I, I yeah. like that. Then what, what genres does this cover? Time travel, obviously. Time what, travel, what, but... What specific genres and... Classic adventure fantasy. Mm. Cool. Like... Very much like, you know, characters going on a journey. Uh, Fellowship. A little bit like that. Mm. And, you know, the training arcs. The, you know, you, hey, yep. they find, discover parts of themselves and they need to learn their powers, all this stuff. So, a lot of that. Um, and this yeah. was, going back real quick, this was his first book ever published in 2014? Was that his first yeah. self-published book? He was a teacher. Um, before, I think he may still be a teacher. But... Uh, yeah, he Man. published this in 2014. A lot of authors that I know, at least, are, are teachers before they become authors. Rick Riordan of Percy Jackson, mm -hmm. Tolkien, obviously, him. So it seems like a that profession leads to a lot of writers. Makes sense. Yeah, it yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. now the biggest question then. Every mm -hmm. question I ask is big, of course. Of course. <laughs> add emphasis on big, huge, important question. What's your rating of the Lacanus trilogy? All right, so the series as a whole... 
<laughs> this is your average three books average. And why are you yeah. laughing? What? What? I'm, I'm hyping it all up. What? What? No, don't you dare! Don't you dare! I rate the series a six point three three. That is, I know, a six three. That is the most sugar coating, the most graceful way of hyping a book up and then saying, "Man, there's so, James Isling. What, what's his last name? What's the author? Islington. Islington is so offended right now. A six three. That's good. But, okay, good can on I? My did scale. you like the book? Yes, but the our books? rating system has things where like I have to give certain aspects. Like you know. There's some great stuff, and there's some, like, okay stuff. Okay stuff. But it's over. It's above average decent. Yeah, look, look, the things that I get out of it <laughs> were so three. great that it makes me think about it still. <laughs> okay. Okay. But like, if I'm going to go, like, characters. Right, you have to rate characters a certain way. A lot of characters are yeah. really only there. Okay. Like, I'm not having an emotional pull to it. The dialogue and prose. You can tell it's a, you know... Guys, first published all the, you, yeah, you kind of see it, but in all honesty, that's the first book. He gets progressively better with each book. So like, every book gets better, and the ending is just really great. Okay, and, and for for reference for the audience, six three <laughs> is a decent score. It's a five to us is completely average, right? To give to give context, okay. The third context. the third book I gave a seven point three five. Okay, so that yeah, what would you say then? The the best to worst is the best book the third. Yeah, the third book's by far the best. Okay. Um, I gave like plot an eight, um, so with finishes- emotional impact an eight point two five. Like, yeah, it finishes great, mm-hmm. and um, it does make me think. So, the other two are great, aspects. decent books, and the third really finishes pretty strong. Sounds like that. Yeah. Okay. And you know who agrees with you? Hmm. Goodreads. Goodreads. It's, yeah, Goodreads yeah. gave the first book a four. So the shadow vote was lost of four point one four. They gave the second book an echo of things to come a four point two five. And then the third book, The Light of All That Falls, a 4.41. Really strong score. So yeah. does that seem accurate that it starts off okay, then gets pretty and then ends pretty great to good? Or does yeah. that sound right? That's about, yeah, that's about okay. right there. That's cool. So, yeah, yeah the, the main thing I'm that I would pitch that, hey, what do you, uh, why am I recommending this to you and yeah. to you guys listening? Because it is a recommendation. It is a recommendation. Although it's a 6.3, it's a recommendation. <laughs> Hey, not everything's going to be Hyperion. Listen, your nines mean much more when you give other books sixes and sevens. Yeah, okay? exactly. So, no, I'm, if, you, if you've already read it, and I'm rating this a 6-3, think about all my other recommendations right. and apply accordingly. Okay, okay. And plus, real quickly as well, for reference for people, we have five categories that you're rating when you go into this, yeah. which we'll, Let, we'll, go, actually, we'll go yeah, individually let's go into, into them. them. Want to do that? Yeah, let's go into okay. those. So emotional impact overall gave for the series. Keep in mind, I think first, second, drag the third book a little bit down, but the emotional impact overall a six point four two. Okay, it's good, but there are aspects where like the first book it gave like a five, like it's fine. Emotionally started five and ended what? Well, what what did it end? What was the? It ended there? with eight point two five. Okay, so gradually just this. Well, this is I love when a journey ends. I mean, obviously, oh, yeah. and super well. That's promising. Yeah, yeah th- a big a big reason why I'm giving it like a five is when I first read the first, like I read the first book. I didn't pick up the second book for like at least two months. Okay, you weren't like, rushing I, to I read, read the it, second. I read it, it was fine. I was like, maybe I'll read the second book. I'm not sure. And then I was like, yeah, the cover's neat. Mm-hmm. Might as well read it. And a significant improvement on okay. the second book. So I was like, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm really liking where this is going, and I went right into the third book. So, the first book I was just kind of on the fence about. And could you tell that the first book was self published? Was yeah. there a sense? Okay, but still not bad. No, no, not bad. Okay, just not like Sanderson level or of anything course. like that. And then when Orbit picked up the series, it just got significantly better because probably editor more editors were involved. More there was there's probably more behind it. Probably Maybe more that pressure was... on him sure. to like really step step up his game like he's probably like working really hard to make sure it is you know publish publish level right. i imagine the the pressure probably made it a little better yeah yeah I, I imagine like as a teacher he was kind of writing the first one like here and there just doing it between classes second one he was like oh now i need it yeah mm-hmm. none of that's probably accurate but yeah who knows? Know, we're just talking out of butts here <laughs> okay so. so mostly it felt like that what about characters how do the characters feel characters a six five 
Okay, and so right around where emotional impact was. For yeah, and definitely the reason why I'm giving it, the thing is, six five is not low. It's like it's good. Six five is good. It's mm-hmm. better than average. Yep. But the reason is because there's like there's especially like w- one character I, that is an important character to the whole series. Really drags. Like, oof. Mm. Like, even till the third book was a real drag and very forgettable for me. And that it was a lot of page time. Read the book, everybody. <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> he, he loves the book. Six. Yeah. <laughs> before, like, before, as we were talking about what to record, you're like, oh, look, Canis Trilogy. Let's do that one. It's an interesting yeah. one. And then you threw that six bomb at me. I'm, <laughs> I'm a little stunned. <laughs> you really wanted yeah. to record this one. So you... You it seems yeah. like you like it more than your rating reflects. Just a tiny bit. There's a little bit of oh, it, it's yeah. A no, journey. the the main thing is the reason why I still think about this is the ending to the third book. Oh, the ending to the third book, and also I just loved the magic system. Okay, it was so much fun. Like that's the thing. Okay, maybe let's skip right to it. Give super us super fun. Yeah, give us world building magic. What would you rate that, and what was the feel? Six point six seven. <gasps> no! <laughs> that didn't just happen. That did not just happen. <laughs> Wait. Let's say that again. Six point six seven. So you said the reason, the reason you wanted to cover these books was for the magic system of world building. Which well, no, no, no. Magic system. Magic system of and world. plot. Magic okay. system and plot of the third book <laughs> are so great that I loved it. So can you tell us why this magic system was so phenomenally a 6-6? Six, six? <laughs> tell us. Give us your glory. Look, glory building is you. not just magic. It's also the history of the world. It's the landscape. Do you see like yes. the images? Do you see like diversity of location and cultures and all these different aspects? The cities and other things are very forgettable. Okay. <laughs> They're like... Yeah, like most of the landscape around is like, eh, it's fine. <laughs> this is this is too funny to me. <laughs> People watching this fear like, why the hell are they talking about this book? <laughs> You're gonna wreck. Okay, go on, go on. Sorry, the magic system is what makes it super cool. Yeah. So if someone out there loves a really good magic system Here, and a time travel story, right? Yeah. I thing is, I don't want to describe too too much, or else I'll be probably spoiling oh, some stuff. Yeah, keep it swiftly. But the idea of so first, the idea of life energy itself is like kind of the fuel of magic system. And your essence, as your you're essence, saying. yeah. Now, if you imagine, so every individual produces essence. Imagine someone who doesn't. What would happen to them? Okay, they're dead, right? Well, what if you can draw essence from your surroundings and everyone else instead of producing your own? You can kind of like... Like a parasite. Yeah, you kind of can live on that edge. Mm. Now, all of the implications of what that would all... Like, it's a hindrance, because you can't... You literally can't survive without drawing from everyone else. Okay. Or anything. So trees, even anything like that. It comes with significant downsides, but also some interesting upsides, which the series uses very well. Mm -hmm. It's very fun. And also how you can use this new magic system to create machines that you, so con, because it can manipulate essence, you can create automatic kind of machines that use magic. And that's in neat. neat, neat. I always like the mechanical side of magic systems. Mm-hmm. That's why I really liked the fourth stormlight book. Mm-hmm. Other people may not, but I loved all the mechanical aspects yeah. of the magic system it goes into. So that was my big draw. And yeah, that's why I liked it so much. So now let's get into dialogue. <laughs> Wait, what'd you rate dialogue in prose? 5.42. <laughs> I I am so happy I asked dialogue and not plot next because the 5.2 makes it so much, so much more of a juxtaposition. <laughs> so it's, it's the dialogue's fine. Dialogue's fine. Okay. It, it, it I, I'm not going to like upsell that one. It, I, I'm just imagining <laughs> someone just sitting at home their favorite series ever is the Lacanus trilogy they're like oh my god finally someone recovers my favorite trilogy and then slowly throughout the video just become decrepit lose oh. all hope yeah I mean hey look I'm praising it I like it 
I still think about it sometimes. <laughs> I'm just saying, what, uh, like, yeah, if you have like a book that I wasn't thinking, like I wasn't even sure I was going to read the next one. Yeah, yeah. The second one, which, which was fine, but some characters dragged in, improved in many ways, but it's okay. Okay. And the third just knocked it out of the park for me. I like, like that. I mean, I, that's that's why. I mean, like, okay, that's okay. why I'm doing it. Like, all okay. these scores, it's basically two books dragging down the third okay. score. Like, if I'm just giving you, like, the third book score, yeah, emotional impact's 8.25. The characters are a 7. Significant improvement. Yeah. Uh, plot is an 8. That's that great. great. Uh, dialogue Pro is still a 6.5, oh, oh, but, you know, gosh, it's gosh, still gosh. improved. And then a world building is 7. Okay, so, so then... Let's let's get into yeah. that then. The plot category. What'd you rate the series, the three the trilogy? What was the average? Plot? Well, the average for plot was a six point six seven. So everything's in that that six or five. Yeah, I, okay. <laughs> that's the that's the problem with rating the whole series. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. the reason why I like the book is because the third. Okay. okay. Like I'm recommending read this so you can read the third. There's book. a lot to look forward to. Exactly. I like it. I like it's it. It's not bad in any it's fine, the first mm-hmm. book. Better the second book and oh, you know, swing and home run on the th- on the third. Beautiful, beautiful. So plot throughout the series just continuously gets better. It's a nice journey. What, yeah. what can you say without spoiling the plot about why you felt it would just got better? Well, a couple different aspects. So there's a character in the first book that we, we I thought was pretty lackluster. Okay. In the first book, and by the end, significantly improved. Like oh, really interesting character journey. Great. Mm-hmm. Um, then of course the two main characters that I talked about before were very fun, especially one was an emotional journey. Like they're basically just going on a character journey of discovery and not liking anything that they find. Very interesting. And the others are kind of classic, you know, protagonist adventure discovering about themselves and becoming more badass. So by the third book, they're just so badass and you're like, yeah, kick their butt. It's great. It's fun. Nice, nice. Okay. Classic. So, you know what? <laughs> it's been a quick video. I want to hear the last portion you have to say then. Is this a Richie one, two thumbs up? Where, where does this stand? Give us the Richie, should you read this book, summary review. Let's see it. It's a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Richie, thumbs watch up. it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, watch it. Watch, I don't know. Read it. He wants you to watch, watch the book. Watch us. Read the book. <laughs> watch the book. Okay. Watch the book. <laughs> okay. So, also, the covers are neat. The covers are neat. I was, I was covers are neat. Out. Yeah, covers are neat. I like them. Actually, a lot of people in comment sections, more so on TikTok, but ask a lot of the times what that series is because they see it's cool covers. Oh yeah, the spines are cool. Orbit, so. Orbit's great at book covers. Yeah, I, I consistently like Orbit book covers. I think more than Tor. You absolute shill. You know why you're saying that? Orbit sent us a free book. <laughs> they did send us a free book. <laughs> that was one really time. cool of them. Actually, they sent. That was what nice. book was that that they sent? Oh, uh, the Martyr. The Martyr. Follow up yeah. to the Pariah. They sent good it. cover. So uh, say that one more time, and then I'll make a clip out yeah. of it. Orbit. Yep. Orbit yep. makes just the best book covers in the industry. I love There's Orbit. There's nothing better than Orbit. Orbit is Honestly, great. Tor can go suck a No, don't, don't. Can we say that? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay. I like Tor. Tor uh, made, I mean, Tor did Wheel of Time, so they, they get a pass. Tor, don't, we can't ruin our relationship with Tor. Come on now. We have no relationship with Tor. Exactly. But you don't want to make a non-relationship a bad relationship, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to watch this. It's all right. Fine. No, of course not. So, all right. This has been Tudor Ramble, a kind of a fun one on the Canis trilogy. I liked it. Yeah. That was, that was a let's, nice review. Let us know what you guys think about uh, Lacanis, uh, where, where I was wrong. Did you guys love the first book a ton? And if you loved it so much, did you, were you just floored with the third? Because I, I think everyone agrees third's the best, but... Tell us what you think down below and what should we what uh, we should cover next, uh, particularly anything on the shelf uh, that we should review. And let's hope Richie has a at, at least, be, you know, I'd be more happy if you had like a very negative opinion on it. <laughs> just the, the five to six is just cool. It's all right. It's all right. It's cool. I want to talk about it because the magic system. That's that's really the time travels. The, like it's okay. Best recommendation. It's the best version. It's the best implementation of time travel that I have read. Nice. Let's leave it at that. Canis trilogy. This has been Two to Ramble. We'll be back next week. Bye, y'all. Welcome back, everybody. This is Two to Ramble again. I am Austin. I'm Richard. 
can you come on get in, get into that voice of this is Richard? How are you? A little bit of uh... I don't know why you're always weird on camera. Like, it's, you it's talk so normal and then you just go into like weird it's, announcer it's... voices. Like, what's wrong with you? Welcome back, everybody. This is Tudor Ramble. My name's Austin. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> do it again. <laughs> this is a great way to do it. Okay, something just fell in the background. We'll skip past that. So, something. so this is a picture of you. Just chaos. Let's start again. Just fucking cut. It's a mess. I want to introduce us. What? <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs>